Preston, do you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I will, sir. Pledge of Allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Rusty, that doesn't say on air. Hmm? Oh. I thought it did. Yeah, it did too, right? I do a replay. <laughs> oh, there it is. It's on, we're on now. Yeah. Yes, I looked up and saw it. Yeah. Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Vale <coughs> Selectman for November 26. Public comment period. Is there anybody in the public that would like to speak? Mr. Preston, how are you? Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Both days of all over again. Uh, last week and this week, I've got the, the agendas and well, the town manager's report, one through four, it's the exact same thing mm -hmm. as last week. Mm -hmm. I think one, three, and four are all common sense. One <laughs> tells you that from 1 a.m. to 7 p.m., November 15th to March 15th, everybody needs to be off the road. Mm -hmm. Three, do not plow across the streets. That's illegal. That's common sense. And four, if you plow on your property, please do not block crosswalks. Those three are common sense. Yeah. I have a problem with number two. I stated it last week, but I saw the agenda hadn't changed. Um, the overnight parking, I called finance today to find out what the story was. Uh. And they were very nice. Um, they told me that if you rent this place in front of the police station lot on Ashworth Ave, that it was $50 a month. I question and I realize there's no back and forth. That's why I called the, the uh, finance today to find out. But I don't know if this is the only lot that's the case in. If it is, it's wrong. I think we, uh, you know, we want people off the street. That lot is closed. It should be free to everybody from November 15th to March 15th. Unless you're doing, you know, you're charging people in all the other lots in town. And I, I realize and I don't know and I know there's no back and forth here. I don't know where it came up with lease spaces as far as the tax. You know, the, the, pay, the town pays the land tax, and that's part of the reason mm -hmm. people say we, you know, we need to charge. And I said to you, with the stroke of a pen, mm -hmm. we can say that a lot. There's an Ashworth that north side and south side, going by the attendant booth. In the north, we could say that's a town lot, and lease spaces go on this side, so that we can eliminate this issue. I don't know if this is $50 a month for every parking lot in town, or if this is the only spot. If it is, it's wrong, and, and please, please correct it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Rick, so we started early, late, or we started on time, but I didn't know if you were going to be here or not. So. No, I'm here. Well, glad to see you here. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else in the public would like to speak? Seeing none, announcements and community calendar. Mary Louise? Uh, I have nothing this evening. Regina? Uh, just that we have a busy holiday weekend this weekend. We have a tree lighting on Friday, and we have a Christmas parade on Saturday. So hope to see everyone there. Yep. Same thing. Christmas uh, tree lighting on uh, <clears throat> Friday night, which is always a great event, and it's always well re well attended by people in town. So everybody who can get there really should get there. It's fun. And then the Christmas parade on Saturday should be a good day. Should be good weather for it. So looking forward to it. It's going to be good weather. So they're saying. I don't yeah. say, yeah. The afternoon's going to be good. <laughs> well, that's nice, and I'm sorry I get, don't get to go to the uh, Christmas festivities this year, but I'm going to be out of town. But I wish everybody a fun time at all the parade and the uh, tree lighting. I'm sure you'll be missed. It's going to be, it is going to be a good time. It always is. It's always a good, oh, yeah. good event. All right, so next we have is consent agenda. We have a donation of a Samsung Pro Express C36 FW color laser printer. Approximate value 425. Okay. Motion to accept the consent agenda? Well, you're going to explain that Christina won it and is donating it to the it town? It doesn't say that here, so I, I oh. wasn't. It was on oh. the consent agenda, so. All right, I'll make the motion. I'll okay. second it. Good. All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you very much, Christina. Appointments. Christy Pullman. Finance Director. Christy is seeing figures in her sleep. I'll bet she is. Okay. <laughs> so we have the financial reports for the month of October. Right. Uh, everyone received them last week, and they were put up onto the website. 
so it's the 10th month of the year. The target is 83.33%. Um, when you review the tax revenue report, you can see the differences in revenue from 2017 to 2018. The 2018 revenue is less than the 2017 revenue by $125,538. The month's total income was 768919 Of that total, motor vehicles came in at $331,586. Interest <coughs> on taxes came in at $5,913. Building permits at $25,304. Highway subsidy at $95,929. State water pollution control at 95723 Miscellaneous state grants and reimbursements at 56735 That's for the loan forgiveness for the um, asset management software. The majority oh, of that is. Good. Departmental income at $61,084. Parking lot income at $4,598. That was for the final shows that they had. The total parking lot income for 2018 was $557,015. That includes the summer leases and the few winter ones that we've had so far. Other revenues are at $6,146, and the real estate trust is at $84,699. On the expense side of things, you will find that we are 84.8% spent or or over budget by three hundred and sixty two thousand one hundred and seventy two dollars or one point four seven percent in october of seventeen we were under budget by five hundred and seventy six thousand two hundred and seventy five or two point three three percent and i just will note there that we're in the process of um going through all of our open purchase orders and all of those items to Find any savings <coughs> that we can to help offset that um, over expenditure there. General government is over target by $37,165. <coughs> Police is over target by $8,088. <coughs> Fire is over target by $39,791. Building and code is under target by $57,058. Emergency management is over budget by $855. Hydrants are over budget by $22,307. Street lighting is under the target by $2,400. Public works is over target by $189,897. Animal control is under target by $3,947. Mosquito control is over target but should in the end the year under budget, or on budget or under. I assume they're pretty much done with, um, we might have an invoice or so outstanding, but welfare is under target by 9,375. Recreation is under target by 8,505. Library is over target by 14,685. And the conservation is under target by $631. Fund 24, the Recreation Fund, has a balance of $191,536, which includes beach sticker donations of $19,786 and $13,828 being awarded in scholarships. Fund 25, the Cable Committee, has a balance of $284,745. <coughs> Fund 26 to private detail has a balance of $203,396. And Fund 27, the EMS, has a balance of $389,242. Wastewater system development charge, the fees collected in 2018, total 44392 with a balance in this account of $227,992. The fees collected to date uh, um, since the fund was created total $423,819. And the board has also approved expenditures from this fund totaling $89,376. So the adjusted balance would be $138,616. Okay, questions for Christy. Um, Christy, what, you said the hydrants are over budget. What, why or? 
How much over budget? They were over by twenty two thousand, I believe. Twenty two thousand three oh seven. Yeah. Huh. And we pay semi annual payments, so we've made both the payments. So that's where that should end the year as far as I know. And they are budget in the 18 budgeted, they were budgeted at what they were in 17, because that's the only figures we had at that time. Right. Uh, so. And wicked, and wicked obviously charges were applied to that account. Uh-huh. So that's that's where your increase comes from, the wicked charges. So we still need to take a look at that. Well, we don't know what those charges are until the right. end of the year. Right. Okay. <coughs> Anything else? No, I'm not at the moment. Regina? Um, yeah, I have a couple questions. <clears throat> so, on the expense, we're over, right now we're over budget by three hundred sixty-two thousand. Okay. Yeah. But actually, income revenue is not too off. It was only off Correct. by about one hundred twenty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. So that's clearly mostly on the expense side. Yes. You think? I mean, technically, this budget is the seventeen budget because last year was a default budget. So Correct. we made no adjustments for a year of inflation or what have you. So um, I wanted to say that on the parking revenue, I see that we're at 557000 which is good. That's well above the 500000 that we usually write around, right? Yes, um, in 17 parking lots, I think, we're at... I mean, I don't need the number, but what I, what I, the question I have about that is where is the parking, if I wanted to look at what the total parking costs were? as a 1031. I'd like to hear the number. Uh, let's see, so parking lot, if you look at, okay, um, let's see. The actuals for 2018 for the parking lot revenues for the, like, the daily lots right. um, down at the beach in the summer is $503,019. And in 2017, at the end of October, it was $492,843. Just okay. for the daily lots. And That's then close. my number was higher because of the fact that I also included the summer leases. Right. And then we've had a couple of winter leases, too. Um, in 2018, we have $1,205 in winter leases. And in 2017, we only had $100. Um, we have a few more leases. The winter leases this year than we had um, in 17. And then the parking lot the summer leases for 2018 totaled fifty two thousand seven hundred ninety one dollars for this year and in 2017 they were fifty six thousand six hundred forty one for the summer leases that run from March through October I think it's like March 15th to October 15th mm -hmm. or no May 15th I'm sorry not March May 15th to October 15th. So I'm sure as the public's aware this was our first year we transitioned the parking over to the police department for yes efficiency yes. pretty much and for control which I think is very important I'm glad to see the police department doing it I'm glad to see the police department that actively involved down there it's another way for them to be present which I think is very important to Hampton Beach in the summertime but as far as the cost effectiveness of it yet I think that still needs to be determined a little bit I know that right now it still falls under parking and we like to see that move as to some type of a sub line item under the police department as with animal control and things like that. So I know that the assistant town manager and the chief are currently working on, I guess, alternatives that we can make it, like maybe getting some of those machines that would mm -hmm. make less people handling the cash, things like that, yeah. that might be able to uh, help with some of the revenue costs. And I know that they'll take anything into consideration that you have to add into that as a finance point of view. But I feel on the budget committee sides of things, why I'm bringing this up tonight is that this is gonna be a big issue on what they wanna do with that whole section hmm. of parking enforcement and it falling under the police department and the drastic increase to the amount of money that we're gonna be putting toward that this year. So I'm not sure if there's any type of like preliminary information we could get over to the committee so that maybe we can let them know that we are, you know, this is the first year. Mm -hmm. I mean, you something's only going to work if you try it. I mean, you're never going to know if you don't try it. So I don't know if that's anything that maybe the chief and assistant town manager and finance director could work on to help me uh, yeah. present it a little more clearly to the budget committee so they don't just, you, you know, decide that they don't like the idea and they don't want to hear anything more about it. 
Are you so, looking for money in regards to like a comparison like what what was the income compared to what was the okay. expense for like let's say last year and this year and we know that okay we didn't maybe we didn't get as much revenue as we would have liked to have seen but I'm sure we've also figured out ways that we can improve the system as a whole mm -hmm. and I know working with Christy enough that she usually has you know an alternative mm -hmm. idea for anything that gets presented to her so I'm thinking maybe if we could put some of that together for the budget committee so that they have information that they need if that mm -hmm. is okay by this board. That's why am I bringing it up tonight. That's good. And my other thing that I have, well, I wanted to bring up while the finance director is here and in an appointment with us, is that I attended an NHMA seminar a couple weeks ago with the town manager and with, the, with his assistant, Christina Ostman. And I went to one of the seminars I went to was about uh, NHMA presentation on state aid to municipalities history and trends <laughs> and I'm only going to touch on one point that has to do with heavy finances for the town of Hampton on an annual basis and what it is is pension costs yes. so over the past three years and I recently <laughs> by phone verified these numbers with the finance director the contribution requirement for the town of Hampton for 2015, 16, and 17, so this is three years, is $6,583,144. So that's roughly a little over $2 million every year, direct expense, town of Hampton. That expense, along with a lot of other things, used to partially be offset by reimbursements or funding from the state, however you want to look at it. At one time, at its highest, I believe it was 35%. And one of our representatives, Cushing, has been trying adamantly, and Mike Edgar, I believe, adamantly in trying to reinstate it to at least the 15%. Yeah. So just to give everyone an idea, over the past three years, if our state reps got their bill through, that would have been about $987,000 over $987,000 that the town of Hampton would have gotten back over the course of three years to help offset some of this expense. 20% yeah. would be over $1.3 million. And if they went back to the original 35%, that would be over $2.3 million that we would no longer have to expense from yeah. the Hampton taxpayer. Yeah. So since 2008, things like that, not giving any of that money back to us or helping us afford the cost and also ceasing the catch-up formula on rooms and meals and there was one other thing but this all started happening around the 2008 period and that was because we had the recession which makes sense yeah. but at the same time the recession is now over the economy is in fairly decent shape and we also experienced the recession too right here in Hampton yeah. So over that, those 10 years, 11 years, however you want to look at it, that's $700 million Oof. between various things that the state of New Hampshire stopped doing. And that money used to come back to the municipalities per NHMA, per their presentation. And I have the pamphlet right here, and I left some copies with uh, the finance director. If, she, if the budget committee is interested, I think they should take a look at it. And I think when we review the budget this year, we have to keep in mind that management and finance does the best that they can possibly do. But when our revenues are constantly getting yeah. cut from all different angles, all different ways, I mean, what are we going to do? We just can't keep voting for default budgets that are going to give us no room for improvement. Yeah. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Jim? Yeah, obviously, Christy, uh, it's not a good report. I mean, you're only the messenger. <laughs> I'm only the messenger. But it's not a good and it's going to get better. I mean, we're deficit right, right. now. And it, just so everybody understands, you know, the public itself, a town can't end the year in deficit, right? If you do, that comes from that assigned. Yeah. Right, so, I mean, right. it had, the money has to be made up. Yep. Yeah. And I'm sure that you and the town manager have looked at where the budgets that are going over are. Yes. And I, I noticed one myself, and if I'm wrong, let me know. Public Works is 189,897,897 over, mm -hmm. right? One of those things would be the second leak down at uh, yes. Church we, Street. Yeah, we looked at the. Um, we've been looking at a lot of the finer, digging deeper into this, and a lot of the overage is related to the um, second break, which was in March 
in the marsh. That was almost $100,000, I believe, to fix that. And then that, all those storms in March also mm -hmm. contributed to possibly the burst in the pipe and then to a lot of the expenditures that are causing us to run over. We had about 75000 I believe, that was related to Bicentennial Park and Place Cove, um, the repairs. But we are seeking FEMA reimbursement for that. However, that most likely the revenue that we will see from FEMA will only come back in 19, not in 18. I don't think that it's possible. We are gathering all of the numbers and we have almost all the figures, but when we were looking at it today, we were looking at roughly between like 100 to 150,000, somewhere in that ballpark, maybe even a little higher coming back from uh, FEMA, it just will cross over into a new year. So that's unfortunate, but a lot of the expenditures that are the driving factors here are related to those, the two storms in March. One, the first one was all flooding, I believe, and then the second one was a snowstorm that both be, were declared as uh, FEMA disasters that we have been working on seeking reimbursement for, and both of the projects have been um, declared and approved, we just have to get all the numbers together and yeah. see what's going to be reimbursable and what is not. So, so it's important because in this report, people have the opportunity to go through line by line. You list line by line every expense. Yes. Yeah. Just about. And they, they have the opportunity to go through here to see that it wasn't department heads necessarily not paying attention to what was in their budget, but that it was outside influences that caused the spending to go up Correct. so much. Things that they, that they had to do they had no control over but the important thing is we have a month left two months. a month and a couple weeks yes yeah yeah we've already looked at it again today and the gap is closed in you know right. not but yeah. significantly but it is closing in and we're going through the purchase order um, report and I found some th items there and the police chief asked that I uh, when I was here tonight that I asked the board for permission to remove the final cruiser from the general fund into fund 26. I think he was here like two weeks ago, maybe, Fred? Yes. And he had requested that the second cruiser be moved. And so if the board is willing to do that, that will be another 52,000 that we can move over to the uh, fund 26, which is healthy from the report in front of you. And so yeah. we would ask that, he asked on his behalf that I request that of you guys tonight too, so. And, and I'm um, sure. That, that you and Fred will keep us in tune for the next Yeah, we, I start to do unofficial reports on a weekly basis at this point, especially when it's tight like this. Um, I ran a report this finances this morning, which brought us through last Wednesday. And so I'll do that probably either every Friday or Monday for the remainder of the year yeah. so that we can um, keep close tabs on the situation and where we are, where we are at. Um, we've, Fred had put a freeze on spending a while ago. We've reiterated that to others. However, Mother Nature hasn't been too kind to us so far this year. <laughs> or the end of this year, I guess I should say. Because sometimes we can squeak through with little to no snow. And I think they've had a couple of uh, events down there. Not, nothing major, but I know Public Works has had overtime for snow and everything yeah. already. So there's only so many things that we um, have control over. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, I would like to say that some of the things, like Regina said, it's very true that the state has really yeah. clamped up on the money that they've given. Yeah. It's unprecedented all the years I've been here. Um, things like what we're talking, FEMA, there's, uh, which is a federal program. But I think the problem for the state of New Hampshire, um, from what I've visualized all these years I've been here, is that the federal government has stopped giving money to the state. The state gets absolutely no federal funding, and it's happened this way for at least uh, the last money that came into New Hampshire, from what I've seen, is the money that came from the Obama stimulus. There was a huge amount of money that came in then, and <clears throat> that money should have gone to roads, but what it went to here in New Hampshire was that was the money that the state gave to the towns. And so since that stimulus money was handed out, mm. which came from that Obama stimulus program, that was money that was given to the towns. Since then, the towns have nothing. got almost nothing. And we knew that this was going to happen. Mm. We've seen it. And now things like FEMA, nothing. Things like the Army Corps of Engineers, nothing. 
New Hampshire is, a, in my opinion, is hurt much more than any of the other states because we don't have taxes, we don't have income tax, you know, the taxes on sales tax, and it's starting to hurt, and we're getting no federal aid, and that is the problem. The whole time I've been here, the, the have when we had storms, we were given the money, weren't we, Mr. Welch? We were, sir. We never had to fight for it or beg for it and only get turned down like what's happened for the last couple of years. And it's really something that people should be paying attention to, but there, you know, a lot of people just don't get, it, don't have any idea of how their loot, their the state of New Hampshire is getting no federal money. They, the only thing I've seen that they've given is for the uh, uh, drug uh, problem, and you know, I think New Hampshire was pretty much crucified for that. Like we're the only one that has that problem. But there just is no money coming in. And it is very visible for anyone that's been sitting here on this board that we have not been getting the money that we were getting year after year, year after year. We were getting percentages of uh, the last one that I can remember where we were offered any money and the town turned it down was uh, when they were going to do the intersection over here near the galley hatch, we were going to get 25%. I don't even remember, and that was at least three years ago. How many years yeah, ago was that? Was. Oh, more than five. More than five. Yeah. So, you know, the recession's over. Money should be flowing in because there's, but instead, I guess it's a big tax, uh, 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 people are getting tax benefits, but now they're going to pay for it through their town taxes and I tell people every day, get ready for it because your taxes are going up here in Hampton and everywhere else in New Hampshire. No matter what we do, here at this board, we have given, uh, we submitted uh, a budget which we saved money for the town, but instead there's a 4% increase and that can only be expected to be worse in the future unless the federal government makes some changes. The only thing I had to say is, is looking at a couple of these things is one, the, like the fire department budget's over by almost forty thousand dollars. A couple things there is one, they had some damage from the from the storms, mm -hmm. yeah. and so some of that was insurance. But other part of it, they've had to take on the cuff, and it was a lot of extra work, a lot of extra overtime. Second thing is, is last summer we 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 approved him to go over a little bit so we could make sure we maintained nine men during the summer mm -hmm. because yeah. that was something the public asked us to do yeah. right as a board and that and that's something we did so we got to make sure that you know some of that is, some of this is our our yeah. fault too but we were doing it because that's what the public wanted us to do this another one would have been ann's lane yeah. ann's lane came in and it was we needed some extra money and we said we've been telling the public that we're going to do this for a long time we want to get it done that got done so some of that is our own fault, but it's what our constituents have been telling us that they want. So we understand that it, it's been a tough budget year, and the fact is that we are on a default budget. And that's the importance of having a budget every year mm -hmm. uh, for the budget committee. Uh, you know, there, there's not a lot here. Um, I think you've done a great job at trying to control it as best you can, and I'm sure over the next six to eight weeks you're, you're going to make sure that we have it all set and we'll get it as best we can right and but on fire I just want to comment that um, after speaking with the chief today that um, his position will be changing already because of the fact that the grant that he received for the radio yep. and mm -hmm. stuff that whole purchase order is in accounted for in these figures that are in front of you at like 92,000 mm -hmm. but he's only going to be on the hook for 10,000 but we had to issue a purchase order to the vendor right then we're going to get reimbursed so we're going to be moving that around so again that's, so there that's that will put him back into yeah. the mm -hmm. black as opposed to the red if you want to do colors well but um, I just so, want everybody to understand that yes. we, you know part of that was mm -hmm. that we we did that as a board so right. I would like to say too that you just mentioned about Ann's Lane and all the other roads and <clears throat> These roads probably would have been done with some of that stimulus money if it was handed out like it was in every other state. But the other states used it on their roads, like Massachusetts and stuff like that. But here in New Hampshire, it came back for our, to try to help with the schools and things like that. The, it, the, the state of New Hampshire used that federal money to 
uh, make their burden easier because they didn't have the money either. But in the meantime, here in Hampton and all over New Hampshire, we did not get that money for our roads, and now the taxpayers have to pay for it. I just have one more question I wanted to say. Um, I agree. That's I think exactly that we should definitely put more it. for that money back to the roads, that's for sure. One thing we don't focus on in this state is infrastructure. Don't even look at it, okay? So that's definitely made clear in anything I've seen as a selectman or a layperson. Don't even look at it. Um, but what I did want to point out, which I agree with Rusty also what he said about how we did the Anne's Lane, which was very important. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we put that in there. And I don't think, I think you guys are going to handle it by the end of the year. I have a feeling everything will be fine. But on support services for the police department, I've been tracking this since June of 2018, okay? Every single month I look at Christie's financials and I, I do, what, what's the changes? What's changed in this budget? This is out of the total police department budget, which is the 2018 actual budget was almost 4.3 million. We budgeted about 774,000 for support services. This whole section, you know, we have in there the outside agencies for the police that come in from UNH and all that that the chief can uh, get a hold of to come help us. But in 2000, June of 2018, this account expense was $364,000, 363843 So for the months of July, August, and September, and I think I put... October in there too. That was only about 50000 for the month of October. We spent out of that same part of the budget more than what we spent for the first six months. Three, almost $387,000. That's a hundred, over 106% of that line item that's been spent all <coughs> happened in the months of July, August, and September and October. Now we know what that is from. That's from our police department having to handle everything that happens down that beach. Okay, I realize that the state might not be getting as much money from the federal government. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that a lot of states aren't getting as much money from the federal government as they were 12, 15 years ago. But at the same time, these guys got to realize that the revenue that is made in Hampton does not just stay in Hampton. In fact, most of it gets taken away from us. So it would be nice in the near future if we could maybe start getting a portion of this, if not the whole entire support services reimbursed back to us from the state of New Hampshire on an mm -hmm. annual basis. So yeah. I just want to say I would like to also point out, and I'm sure Mr. Welch can vouch for this, <clears throat> that didn't the state stop giving us um, a share of the room and meals tax? Uh, they did. That's a nothing I uh, yeah. you. Well, yeah, we know that. Yeah. And when they re started giving us some more of the um, room and meals tax, again, it came out of that Obama stimulus program. That's where they got the money to do it, because other than that, we weren't going to get it at all. So not only was it the schools, but it was they used that money that came in here, and they, they used it for their own uh, to pay the towns in that. So evidently, the state has a lot of problems doing whatever they, that they have to do, and they don't really care about, you know, that it's all put on the backs of the taxpayers, but that's what's happening here. I agree. One very quick comment. Uh, when it comes to dealing with the state, if we are inclined to invite representatives from the state to the town of Hampton to have a discussion on Channel 22, they don't want to come. And in fact, I think in my last term, uh, Mr. Griffin, you said they don't want to come because they'll be treated rudely. So with all that's going on with the money and the in Concord, um, we can't even get anyone to sit here like civilized people and talk. Well, th I'm sure that they uh, don't want to be attacked either, and I don't blame them. It's not a matter of being attacked, it's a matter of talking it, When we can sense. come to some nice conclusions and they're treated decently, they'll probably come. Hmm. So do we need a motion to on the cruiser? Do you want to? Do you do want us to make a motion? Did they make a motion last time for it? Yes, they did. Okay, yes. so I think it would be a good idea. Yeah. yeah. So we need a motion to take the cost of that. 
of the cruisers from all three. It was three cruisers total. So it's I think there's a, a purchase order. The portion that's in the general fund right now is fifty two thousand. That covers two. You had already made the motion to remove yeah. one of them, but if we can remove the third one and put them all in fund twenty six. So, okay. Regina says I'll she'll make, make motion. that motion. Jim seconds it. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Thank you, Christy. You're welcome. Thank Have you very much. Night. Next one we have up is Brian McCain, Chairman of the Cable <laughs> Committee. Wow, look at that. He's not here and he appears. It was a long drive, Brian. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Good evening, Brian. How are you guys doing? Uh, Good. I'm here for two reasons. One's for the Cable Committee and one's for the Cable Renewal Committee. The first one uh, is the, uh, I'm looking for a pay increase for the techs. And, and I'm, I'm asking that not for the guys. They, they don't, they have never asked me, you know, we should get paid more. This is to try to get new hirings, to get more people involved with Channel 22. We, right now, I mean, we've tried over the years, you know, recruiting our own friends and, and such, and just nobody really wants to do it for $10 an hour for two years. It's just, it's, it's just, it's just not appealing to anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a good economy, so people don't need extra money. And so we were hoping as a committee to raise the, uh, um, the starting salary to $12.50 an hour. Right now we're at $10 an hour for the first two years, $12.50 after that. Uh, we would like it to go up to twelve fifty for six months, mm -hmm. and then fifteen dollars an hour after that. <clears throat> I know it's, it sounds like a big increase, uh, and uh, it, it's not easy coming in front of you and ask for that because I, I, uh, all of us we're not in it for the money. I, it, it might, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if anybody believes that, but <laughs> we're not. I mean, we would have been gone a long time ago. Yeah. But uh, a lot of the towns, and there's a town. I don't know if I'm supposed to mention this, but there's a town around us. And I've asked uh, quite a few towns what they make. And uh, one is Bedford, and, and they, they're around, they, they do flat rates for, uh, for meetings, which is, I think it's, it's you know, near $20 an hour mm -hmm. for a three hour minimum. Uh, and then we have another town in, right around here that they pay high school kids $15 an hour to do in studio, $20 an hour to do outside. Mm. And Portsmouth, I, I've never got a response from them. And I think Exeter is the only, they're about like us. They're, 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 mm. they, they don't pay a lot, but they also have the same problem. They don't have enough, a lot of people. So, so that's why I'm here. And you know, uh, I think I'd we, like to get your input. And well, I think we need to encourage, one, you're not going to encourage people to come in at $10 an hour. No. I think uh, we, I we, think we so. definitely need to have, have that up there. And I, and I think that the, the 15 is more than reasonable. One of my pro one of the things I see is we have some people that have been here for 10, 12, 14 mm -hmm. years doing this at a low pay, and maybe we not need to have some of our senior people getting paid even a little more. <clears throat> and I know that's your, not your, you're asking, no. uh, but I, I could see something like that because, you know, we ask a lot of these guys, and we've had a number of times when we've had meetings and people go, well, how come it wasn't video? We don't have any help, and we're not having any help because nobody wants to do it at. $10 an hour. Mm -hmm. So, Mary Lewis. Yes, if, Brian, how many people are on staff right now? Just just bodies. Four. You have four. Four of the same for the last An years. ideal staffing for you would be? I would think, uh, I would like to see double that. I'd like to see eight people and eight. we can rotate. Okay. And, and if somebody's sick or somebody wants to go on vacation mm -hmm. or do something, they, they don't have to worry about not making it. And right how now many we all hours cover. Do they work? Uh, they average, I mean, the, me and my brother do school board, selectmen, and uh, I do the outside stuff. And like the, and, uh, and Bill and Peter do everything else. They do the HBVD, the HBAC, budget, and uh, and whatever else, I can't even, and, and zoning. And they, we, you know, we average about um, just time in here. I think it's around 20 to 30 hours a month. Hmm. A month? Oh, that's a, a month. month? Yeah. Oh. It's I not a ton. It's not like it's a ton, but it's, 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 you know, like during the busy time, you're here 
three or four days a week. And it just gets, it's not, a, it's, not, it's not like they're here every night. It's just that they're here. They have to be here. And they're always here. They never, they never fail. So. I think I still have the floor. Um, do you know what the pay scale is for the Channel 13? For the school district. He is it just John? It's just John right now. He does have helpers. I don't know what he pays them, but I know they're going to be. They're looking for, I believe, a full-time person, and they're going to have a part-time person that's uh -huh. going to be in the twenty to twenty-five dollars an hour. Range. Okay, and that of course comes out of the school budget. And uh, what was the pay for Mr. Cantor, who came from? He NASA was twenty dollars an hour. Okay. Now, are you actively looking for another we, really we have to, we, we are really technical person? Yes, yes, we're still looking for that. We need somebody in here to, you know, take care of things during the day if there's breakdowns. Yeah. Because right now we're doing it and we're scrambling, yeah. so there's problems. Because so. Channel 22 needs help. It needs it needs somebody to take care of problems yeah. that that happen yeah. during the day. I can't be here. I Jim. wouldn't I wouldn't have well, a problem with increasing. Jim. The, uh, Hourly pay. Yeah, yeah, nothing comes out of the school budget and nothing comes out of the general budget. It comes no, out of the fund. It comes out of the fund. Right. So, um, so right. nothing is paid from any of the budgets at all. Right. It comes out of and the that's an important gas. thing to know that right. it comes out of the, the uh, franchise the fee, fee right. that, yeah. which is cute. paid to staff a right. peg station. Peg station and the yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That's yeah. good. For yeah, Gina. So no, nobody. I don't have a problem with the $15 either, but I do have the concern that Rusty brought up about how we make sure that we get the people that have been doing it the whole time yeah. <laughs> paid, well. you know, better than before offering new people a higher rate. I would, you know, I just want to make sure that doesn't well, happen. I would be comfortable to make a motion to allow it to be $15 an hour for everyone that's there now and um, twelve fifty for the new people. A second. So, motion. but w a, a, what he mentioned was, twelve fifty for the I first six just months. I say the twelve fifty, and then let's review it later. And then, so and then go to the we'll try it. Well, no, I'm not for the fifteen until we review it and after we've done. Well, so, what are you, what are you for? Twelve fifteen for uh, everybody that's there now, that's been there for uh, more yeah. than whatever you. Your, yeah. Well, it's been here over yeah. two years. We'll yeah, everyone's I mean, everybody been there, so at here. least 15 for them, and then 1250 for anyone new, and uh, then we'll go from there after six months. Yeah, we'll have to try. Yeah, we'll definitely and have to work See how it works. See if, if it I can makes get it any better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I realize it's not enough. I'm against them paying 20 something dollars at the school. But well, I did, don't that's, that's, my opinion. Opinion. that's just what they we were talking yeah. about. Well, I, I think that that's out of hand. And um, and I don't I th I think it should be more, you know. I know how hard you work. I'm, you know. I, this is I, not my profession, though. So no, I understand I that. that you know I yeah. shouldn't be paid as. A, and it's as always a been referred to as a stipend. Right. And I think that this is an improvement, and that's why I make the motion of 15, and then 12.50 for new people, and then six months. Let's take another look Come at back. it sure. yeah. and uh, sure, see we where we go that. from there. Well, do. when we get someone. If we can get some people, yeah, yeah we'll see how they work out. If we can yeah. get a, a group, then we'll we'll see how it goes. If mm -hmm. we can get a few mm -hmm. more people, even and young we'll people, take, we'll take a look at it. Sure, again. sure. That so we have a reasonable. motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Perfect. Now, but I do want to come back in that six months, and I yes. really think we should address the people that have been here for mm -hmm. over ten years. Well, let's do it in six months. Let's you know, I think I think that's important. I think they've been here. They have been loyal. Yeah. They have done a great job, and I know they're saying it's not about the money, but you want to know something? If somebody else comes in, we're going to have to be up there anyways to get them to come in and do the, mm -hmm. the work that they did, and I don't think we can mm -hmm. find somebody to do the work that they've done. May, may so. I just ask for a clarification? I understand about compensating the existing crew, because they've been here a long time, and the entry level that Rick is talking about at 1250, but if there is an experienced uh, techni technician mm -hmm. uh, who's not just it. entry level, who's not just in training, 
Uh, should Brian come back to us? What happened to the other one? Is he not here anymore? No, he, no. he can't. Okay. He, he, well, then let's, you know. It, well, let's, that, that's a different subject. That's, that's a different that's, subject that's altogether. That, that, that's, that's, that's a, a position. That we're yeah. talking about trying to get some kids interested and right. making some it a little bit more bearable for right. these right. other guys. So we come back and discuss right. it when a technic, if and when a technical <clears throat> person. Yeah. If you get, ever get a chance to get a higher technical. Oh, we're going to uh, try. We're going to try. We're going to please bring it forward. Oh, we will. We're going to try to that's what you're doing anyway. Right. Right. So we appreciate it. Good. Okay, so the next uh, uh, is, is, this is now the, uh, I'm the vice chair on the, uh, on the cable renewal committee, and uh, we've, uh, we were talking and, and um, we were thinking about giving a, doing a survey to see what people like and dislike about Comcast and what they, what they want to get out of Comcast. And uh, uh, Ann Carnaby came up, uh, she did a lot of research, she did a lot of the work. Uh, that the Rockingham Planning Commission has a uh, has a uh, survey they, that they, I guess, own and or lease, and then they they yeah. they'll do it for you. Yeah. They'll set up a survey for you, and I guess the cost is around seven hundred and fifty dollars for that. Okay, uh, and what it would do, it, we would put it out. We were talking about it the, the other night. We'd put it out on both websites, the town and the school, social media, maybe even some some. Uh, something, you know, maybe doing something at the town while people yeah. come in, are you a Comcast? Would you fill out this survey? You know, it's all just the Comcast service, I mean, uh, uh, subscribers. But uh, we think that's a, a, a good way of getting input to what people want, because it's their, it's their mm -hmm. money, it's their, it's what, it's their, their uh, it's about what they want, it's not what we want. So uh, we'd like to do this survey and uh, get the results and then uh, yeah. meet again and see if it's something we can, uh, you mm -hmm. know, convince Comcast to change. I mean, it's going to be a tall order, but, yeah. but uh, to do that, we, we would need, we're asking for $2,000, $750 plus, and I, she hasn't got the exact amount uh, for the survey to yeah. be done, and then the rest being incidentals. If we don't use it, it goes right back into the cable mm -hmm. fund. Anne was quite excited about that survey, she was, and she yeah. explained it in detail at the planning and board. And she's come up with a, 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 a great bunch of questions. You, you weren't here because you were getting a need. I'll make a motion to do that. Um, I think it's a good idea that we can use that survey when we uh, negotiate with Comcast. Right. That's what this is all about. This right. is all about just to have mm -hmm. some leverage. So no, I think it's a good idea. I'll, I'll second, second that. Oh, all right. Him. So uh, any other questions? A motion and second. All those in favor? Perfect. Unanimous. All right, that's it. Thank you right. for everything Thank you. Thank you. You're worth a lot more. <laughs> Don't get him too excited now. <laughs> Good man. Okay, now we have the town manager to report. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, I'm repeating these things because it's not being taken to heart by everybody. Right. The winter parking ban is in effect for all cars on all streets from 1 a.m. to 7 a.m. for each day from November 15th, 2018 to March 15th, 2019. Overnight parking in town parking lots is permitted during snow emergencies, but at no other time except for those who have winter parking permits that can be purchased through the finance department. Those with special flood permits for parking in town parking lots may park when the tides exceed 10.1 feet. I hope, we hope everybody took advantage of that this week <coughs> because certainly we had some pretty high tides. Um, please do not plow snow across streets. Such activities are in violation of the town ordinances and can cause traffic and accident problems. And clearing snow on your property, please do not block sidewalks once they are cleared. Construction on the Tide Mill Road continues with the replacement of the sewer line and force main for the Church Street. Please follow signs and drive carefully with workmen on the roadways. They're making terrific progress going down Tide Mill Road. Mm -hmm. Down there inspecting that this weekend and, and they're, they're moving along quite well. Um, we are and we have, we just I issued the copy, a copy of a report to the Board of Selectmen today from um, Jen Hale at Public Works. Yeah. We are working with the Department of Transportation. Uh, they're allowing us to continue to do work down there. We do not have a permit. This is a day-to-day -day proposition. Yeah. And they're looking for weekly schedules, which we're giving them, and they're allowing us to continue along to install the piping that we need to install. Um, 
we'll see what the rest of the, the traffic bears. There's some question as to whether or not they're going to suspend that, not allow us to start work again until spring. Mm. So we'll see. It depends upon uh, weather, depends upon the type of weather we receive and whether or not DOT crews have to work on the roadway. They do not want our equipment there while they're working. So uh, we also, Mr. Chairman, I don't believe you've actually voted, and I don't recall you voting. Maybe you did, and I was uh, doing something else here, but uh, we received our bill from the New Hampshire Municipal Association for next year. It went up. Which is 19044 I believe we have in this year's figure. Um, 18. Yes, 18000 some odd dollars. Yep. Um, I'm wondering if you want to uh, ask the Budget Committee to amend that or uh, ha have a message carried to them by our representative to, to consider amending that and bring it up to the current mm -hmm. value. I'd like to make that motion. Motion, second. They all won't be too happy with 12. that because. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Three, uh, four, four. I'll abstain on that. One I'm abstain. tired of fighting with the NHMA here. That's it, sir. Oh, yeah. good. Questions oh. for the town manager? Ah, yes. Fred, the dredging, and it looks like that finally got accepted. Do, is there a, a date and time like next spring, or do we have anything on that? There is. The, the Congress passed and the President signed an authorization bill to allow them to begin the funding process for dredging. <sighs> we are in that process a lot. Uh, circle at this point, because yeah. that's what it is, is a big circle, uh, along with... Uh, every other state in the union and probably every other city and town in every state in the union so we haven't got it totally locked in yet no the appropriation's not been made but it has been given to committee and uh everybody's working to get that done okay and the army corps of engineers has been working with us on a weekly basis almost mm -hmm. a daily basis to get that material in and whatever they need to get this scheduled and done okay and uh, really quickly, the uh, aquarium, the latest report <laughs> on hydrants, year-end inspections of 496 public hydrants are starting this month mm -hmm. and will be completed by the end of the year. There's another month till the end of the year and the worst weather coming up. I'm we, a little... I um, hope it's the best weather because we don't want to be plowing. Well, I don't know, but I think that's rather offensive, frankly. Oh. Sorry about that. That's their schedule. Uh, I, I might go back to uh, the dredging. Uh, we've had a number of calls from people that, who are upset that we're not going to be putting uh, sand material from the dredging on um, Sun Valley on the ocean side. Yeah, you covered that. I well, remember. I did cover it once before, and no, we are not because there's not enough to take care of the problems on the river side oh. uh, where we are losing. We've lost 175 foot of Yep. Inch where the sand dunes are yep. and we've also lost a lot of uh, material around the bridge abutments and there's a house in danger down there because they've lost 100 feet of frontage of town property that's been washed away mm. so those are high priority issues and we just barely have enough sand in Hampton to accommodate that the other uh, Seabrook uh, quantity is very very high because of course our harbor is completely filled so most of the, most of the dredging material is coming out of there and since it's Seabrooks, they have first call, they have places they're going to put yeah. it within Seabrook. So. They can't dig stuff up from the ocean floor? Or <laughs> they can, but that's going to require an appropriation from the town to do that because oh. it's not part of dredging. Oh, so. oh there's always a catch. And then our, you've got our, uh, our revised, slightly revised Board of Selectmen meeting schedule, end of November, which is tonight. And then December, only three meetings in December. One, that was what we voted on last we week. Voted. I I know, but we got a lot of work to do before. And that's what was voted on last week by the majority that, of this board. Manager's report. That's yeah. it, sir. That's yeah. it. What, well, what about the twenty seventh? What was what it? The that's on Thursday night. Well, you had suggested that as a as an emergency meeting night in case you need it. So that's in case we need it. That's in case you need it. It's okay. not something you Correct. set in concrete. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I, I just want to add one thing about the dredging because I was actually talking to Fred about that um, this morning. So it is important that I know Sh Senator Shaheen and Hassan are working to make sure that yeah. that does get appropriated yeah. for 19. Yes. But Congress still will have to vote on it in 19 to actually have any of that happen. Yeah. Um, so I just want to make that very clear right. to the public tonight. But our senators are doing their jobs. Thank you to both mm -hmm. of them. 
And one other thing, if it's okay, since we're talking about NHMA and the Budget Committee, does the board have a problem if I share this letter that was sent by the town manager to Judy Silver, executive director, saying what the new procedures are? No problem. No. For NHMA? No. Nope. Is that okay if I do that? Okay. And then also a couple things I'm going to bring up under the town manager's report because they're letters that he sent out. Um, he sent a letter to the planning board chairman asking yes. our request to meet about mm -hmm. Ashworth Ave Property 204. And also he sent a letter to FEMA regarding certain properties that we don't clearly yep. understand why they're in yep. violation. Yep. So the town manager is following up on those, so hopefully we can have some questions to address some of the concerns that I've been receiving. And I'm also meeting Jay Diener Wednesday morning, so hopefully he can fill me in on what I need to know more about all this flooding and grants and all that stuff. So I'm hoping that we can actually get some information on that. And I want to thank the town manager for following up on all these concerns yeah. that are drastically affecting some of the people's quality of living down in certain areas of this town. So you're going to be sure. Jim? Yeah, I got two things. You said you were going to uh, number one, to the there's a blue bus okay. that looks like a, a converted school bus oh. parked on North Beach constantly. I, I think overnight all the time. I know it's on state parking, mm -hmm. but I don't know if they're living in that bus or what, but somebody should look into it. It's a blue uh, yeah, a uh, converted bus, and it's been there constantly. Do they have any carts out? What's that? Do they have any carts out? No, no. <laughs> it could. But yeah. Yeah, how how far up North Beach? Uh, right about in the middle, I think. About in the middle, okay. Yeah, 13th, 15th, 15th yeah. yeah, right around there. <laughs> So somebody can check that. And the other thing is, could we have a, a, a sort of a report on, Charlie comes in here, Preston oh. comes in here every week yeah. talking about the parking and that there shouldn't be a problem with letting people park there. And I know, but I'd like to have just sort of a detailed report on what, why that would be a problem. Good idea. Yeah. Why that would be a problem. So yeah. you don't have to answer it now, you can bring yeah. one up for the next That's meeting or something. Idea. That we can talk about that and just say, you know, mm -hmm. is is that a possibility? Yeah. Well, I missed what he said about the fifty dollars or something. What was that about? At the very if, the if they yeah. if they want to lease spaces, they have to pay for it. You have an established rate for that. I have to actually have to look it up mm -hmm. to see if that's what it is. But I believe it's correct. Um, we had uh, an individual who came in here yeah. a couple of meetings ago and asked for free parking because they're handicapped uh, and they live on. Uh, F Street and we had another request today the yeah. ordinance says that people who rent rooms or lodgings and so forth to individuals are required to provide parking for those individuals whether they have it on their property or not yeah. so all that we're doing here is we're just saying okay the town will now take care of everybody who has to have lodging parking space by giving it away for free um, that doesn't work very well unless you want to repeal all of your existing ordinances on parking that deal with fees. Because if that's the case, then we don't, shouldn't charge in the summertime either. Mm. Because those same people are going to have to have parking again. Right. And, and right now their landlords in the summertime pay fees to rent that parking space so they, because they can't park on F Street. But aren't we talking more about when it snows and these people have to get their car off the Talking road? year round if they're well, renting. Well, they're required under the ordinance, the town zoning ordinance, to have parking for their tenants. And they don't. And they would like you to provide it free, basically. Yeah. Is it possible that could we just do something between the winter hours, November 8th, whatever it is, November through March? Like what we do when there's flooding and... Then you'll Snow probably flooding. have you'll have a full parking lot, and you won't have room for the people who flood because everybody yeah. now scurries to find parking down the beach in the winter time because yeah. you're not allowed to park on the street yeah. from one to one to seven, and and they have to park on the street because they don't have parking in a lot of cases on their own properties right. or the properties they're renting from. Right. Too many apartments, not enough parking spaces. Yeah. So if we just open the gates, then when it comes to flooding, there'll be no space right. for those people who are on the west side streets. And in the past, all the years I've lived here, 55 years, if you needed a parking space in the winter, you went up and parked in the state parking area. That's right. what Park people have park. always done. And right. they're saying they're going to clear that this year. Right. Yeah. And one of the things the state is doing is they're having an odd and even yes. policy. Yeah. And I think that's something that we should look at, mm -hmm. not only both at our parking lot at the beach, 
but also our parking lot uptown here. We should have an odd and even policy so that people are moving their vehicles. So we're not having vehicles parked there yeah. two and three months at a time, four right. months, five How months. How do people find out about that odd and even? People ask me about that. I didn't know about it. I, I believe they're putting signs up but that at the, at the entrances. I think that, but that's... Because people have asked me. I don't even yeah. know. Yeah, that's sure. what I heard. They, they haven't notified the town either. They haven't notified us like how they're doing it, but I know that that's what they're looking at mm. is because they want to plow it, so they want to have... Right. On the odd days you park on the east side, mm -hmm. the even days you park on the west, whatever it well, is. It's I don't that know. way in a lot of cities. Absolutely, yeah. but I think it's something we should look at even for our own top parking yeah. lots. You're right. We can do it for the roads, too, if we wanted to. That would, well, no. Yeah. you can't really do it for the roads because yeah. down the beach you wouldn't be able to plow any of those streets. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. As far as uptown is concerned, we do have, you have created parking there 24 hours a day, 365 days yeah. a year on one section of that lot. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and yes, we could say that you have to be on the west side or the east side or whichever, whatever it happens to be every other day. Uh, and we could clear those areas out and allow the parking to be in there. But again, you're going to fill that parking lot up. That's going to make it difficult for us to maintain and plow. Uh, I would think it would make it easier for them to plow it if, if all those cars are out of that on a certain night. Well, they would, but if, if they're not out of there, that means we got to tow them. Mm -hmm. Once you make the regulation, we have to enforce it in order to plow. Right now, we plow in front of those vehicles or behind the vehicles mm -hmm. and scoot the snow away. They come out, clean their vehicles off, and move them. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no parking in the, in the base parking lot unless it's a snow emergency, and then we allow people to park in there. But they have to be out early in the morning so that we can finish cleaning up that snow and truck yeah. it away. So, and Rusty, of course, my request was a summary an outline yep. of what our ordinances are yep. now, yep. what we might be able to do yep. to and solve it. And we can look it. at some of this other stuff okay. too while we're there. Oh, yeah. Rather right. than just yep. bat it back and forth. Okay. Anything else on the town manager's report? No. Thank you, Fred. The one thing I have. Thank you, sir. And, and I mentioned it to you today. We had somebody piling snow on uh, Luigi Morelli Park. Yes, we yeah. found out who it is. Uh, the snow will be gone tomorrow because, of course, the rain tonight is going to take it away anyhow. Right. We've told them that they are not allowed to put snow there in the future. Okay. So just make Where sure. Hopefully that snow? will not occur. That on the park. It was dumped on the end of the park. The bandstand park. Oh. Luigi Brent Morelli Park. Oh, right. my goodness. Oh. Depot Square. Because yeah. I didn't think there was any snow left. It all melted. Well, in it's been, it, was, it was quite well, a pile oh, there when it started. Yeah. Yeah, it was the last snow snowstorm. Storm. They did it. Two storms, yeah. Past wow. two storms, they right. did. The other thing is, I had a question from somebody on the uh, number of cars on on property that aren't registered in residential A. Is there a limit to what people can have? That's yeah. a good question. That gets that gets a tad involved because if a vehicle is not registered, that's not the requirement. Okay, it has to be junk. It has to be uninspectable as well as unregistered. Huh. You can register any car you want, whether it's inspectable for the road or not, but you can pay the registration fee to register it. But it also has to be inspectable. And if it's not inspectable, then technically out of the law, you can have one. If you have two, you're in violation of the state law. Well, this, th this place it is in town proper that has four or five uh, vehicles that are covered over with tarps and then there are other vehicles parked there also. Huh. Uh, so Can't tell if the cover, we, we went through this at the municipal conference. We had a long discussion with the attorney general's office and so forth that was there. They put on a demonstration or a, hmm. a seminar. And the problem with tarps is that you can't tell whether it's not inspectable. Right. So therefore you can't declare it to be a junk vehicle. Huh. So, you know. I ran into this in another town where the person had 100 Sounds vehicles messy. parked on their property before they changed the law, and they were, he went down and licensed them all so you couldn't touch them. <laughs> then they changed, they've changed the law so now so that um, oh. by court cases, if you put a tarpaulin over the car so you can't see it, <laughs> there's no way of determining whether it's not inspectable or not. You know, it could have no tires or, or whatever, you know, if it's completely covered. Well, it's just these people, I mean, it's, like I say, this is in, in the town proper, and, and they just... Well, if they call us, we'll be happy to go inspect to see what's there. Okay. Oh, huh. wow. All right. Anything under old business? Nope. I just have one thing I want to bring up real quick. 
on uh, water. I'm going to wait, actually, because we invited our legislators to come in next week. And they are coming next week. Again, that was another one of the letters that Fred sent out. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And uh, they will be here. Uh, they've been invited uh, at the December 3rd meeting to be here. And uh, as far as I know, most of them are... As far as I know, we're going we're gonna to have a good, a good turnout of okay, what they awesome. are. So if you've got questions yeah. about upcoming legislation, or what yeah, it, I do. It? And I just, my commission that I was supposed to have a meeting on to wrap up the report abruptly canceled that meeting because they say, per the statute, that we are no longer, we no longer legally can accomplish any business because the statute on the commission ran out November 1st. So I have a problem with that. Uh, and so doesn't. Representative Mesmer, because we we're actually both planning on voting no on that report, mm. and as of today, I never got to cast any vote on it whatsoever. Mm. So I have a huge problem with that. Uh, I understand that Chairman Mullen was just enforcing the law as it's written, but the lip service, that whole commission was ridiculous. And I wanted to tell the board that tonight, uh, Mesmer is in process, and I sent the draft sh a little while ago to the chairman and town manager. They probably didn't have time to even look at it yet, but a draft on a bill that will work on establishing a more permanent type of commission mm. oh, so that yeah. we don't have to go through this right. year after year. It's very important that people remain a part of that, not just state employees and commissioners and all that good stuff. So I just wanted to inform that. I'm going to be talking about with the elected officials on that next week, and I plan on also talking about water, the United States law that I've been doing some research on, which obviously is federal water, mm -hmm. or what they would like to be claimed as federal water. <laughs> and I wanted to also, you know, just keep the uh, public informed on what I'm going to be uh, coming up with on some discussions on maybe some possible bills yeah. that the legislators could help us get through this session to yeah. uh, keep make sure that this water business that Mesmer really started up and has worked mm -hmm. highly on doesn't just... Uh, get lost in the in the dust. It feels like that's what's happening right now. So I just wanted to let the public know. Thank you. Isn't what's it up to the um, legislatures to come up with the bills? Constituents can ask or the towns can ask that they file and <clears throat> because this is a uh, budget year coming up yeah. and we have a new legislature. My understanding is that the filing of bills is open into December. Oh, okay. yeah, so. It usually is. And for the Senate, it's open until they close it. So yeah. Well, I think this is something that um, Senator Tom Sherman is very interested in, and I think yeah. that he you know, will be willing to take the bull by the horn, and this yeah. is what they're voted to be representatives for. And the this name is of the game. What he is He'll a do senator a good for, job. so yeah. I think that really we should look to him for the leadership. <clears throat> yeah. And well, tell Mesmer him. is still our representative now, so mm -hmm. she's the one that... Yeah, but you, you know, she can't, she are, can't file the bills. Yeah, yeah. She can't these file people the are the ones that are voted she, as well, the representatives. She, the ones bill, that she can help me prepare a bill. Right. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 But it's up to the representatives to okay. file the bills. Right. Where are so we? that's all we can do is ask and we work with them. We're here to work with them. Any other old business? Yeah, that's why we're having no. them here. Any new business? We have the 2019 Warren Articles. Are we... Going to do That's what we're going to work on some now. of those. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before you do, um, I'd like the board to consider, as you have done in each year previous to this, on the provisions of RSA 40, colon 13, Roman 5, small a, that all votes regarding warrant articles and recommendations thereof be, be uh, numerically reported on the warrant. Yes. Good. So we need a motion for that? Yes, sir, you do. I'll make that motion. I'll motion. Second. second. Yes. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thanks. Excellent. Okay. So you all got your packet yep. of they had. And, Where do we start? Uh, well, the first one is the election of officers, so that needs that's we don't we don't need to do that. <laughs> second one that's in the packet is the budget. Yeah. And we don't have that back, and so we won't have that until we get that back from the Budget Committee. Right. right. And the next one is the amendments and zoning articles right. and collective bargaining. So the first one that we have for a <coughs> money article is the one to purchase the old gas station at Winnicunna and Lafayette. 
Who's going to? You want to read the? I'll ha be happy to read it if you want me to. And well, then we actually, can just... if you're going to do this, <clears throat> my advice is that you do this with an article of eminent domain. So there's no question about clearing the title of that property, which has been a Brownsfield site. So you're going to insert extra wording in here? Well, I would ask council to oh. do that if that was appropriate. Um, so why don't we come back to that one? So if, if, if we want to do that on the eminent domain. Uh, I, I'd just like to say. I think there's a lot of money right now yeah. for other stuff. We have going yeah, on. I would like to say I don't even want to do it. Right. I mean, I, I would love to do it. I think it's where I think is it? I can't. Right at the, the gas station. Right right I know that, but where is it on this thing? Oh, it's well, a, it's coming it's from the, the UFB. It's the first money article. And it's a smart article. thing to do, I think. And I like that eminent domain. Right. If we're going to do something with it, I think eminent domain is a definite if way to go. You need to clear the title if you're going to do it. However. Yeah. However, I, I just think that that we're, we're talking about maybe ending up this year having to take money out of the. The unassigned fund balance Correct. to go into. I mean, I think it's a, a something that needs to be done desperately. That I don't think we should do it this year. Yeah. That's my well, opinion. I, I if you if you look at the the 2018 budget and the, the projected 2019 budget with the warrant articles you have in front of you, this may not be the end of warrant articles because petitions can come in as right. well. In order to keep the two in balance, you're going to have to kill at least one million four hundred and four thousand dollars worth. Are we worth looking of to vote on these tonight? Which ones no. we don't want? No, we're no. just looking at whether we want to go forward with them or not. Okay, that's up to you. So I would like to you're see looking to for us to come up with a common um, consensus like if we want to bring this forward. Yes, sir. I think I'm sure. against this one. Yeah. I'm against. But even if it's in a domain, you still pay for it. You still have to oh, pay yeah. for oh, it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Out of the UFB, and it's an, a dreadful eyesore yeah. from the center. It's $525,000. Dreadful eyesore. So we'll clean up the town and we'll slow traffic down if we yeah. put something there that yeah. will I'm maybe against attract it. people. Yeah. I'm against it. Well, I'm not against it, but I'm against it this year. Yeah. Well, that's uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. we have a consensus. You know, so skip that's a consensus. I'm against. I'm. I'm not for well, it this year. I think it. we got more to do. Okay. I'm all for someone buying. I wouldn't with you. But all of a sudden, the price is much higher than ever what it was. Oh yeah. Back, so yeah. Okay. someone's going to buy that when the price is okay. right. We don't. Yeah, absolutely. The next one is uh, DPW vehicle purchases. I have questions on that. Okay. And I brought my vehicle list from the budget book. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 423,165 for the purchase of the following replacement vehicles for the DPW. One six wheel dump truck with plow and wing, one one ton dump truck with plow and wing, two three quarter ton trucks with plows, and two sidewalk maintenance vehicles. Replaced vehicles to be traded in if deemed to be prudent by the public works director. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation. Wait a minute. It said deemed by the public works director, town manager, and, and the board, board of selectmen. Select yes. Okay. Well, it, and the, what caught my eye was the uh, public works director. First of all, do we know whether these are uh, the six-wheel dump truck with plow and wing? Is that four-wheel drive or two-wheel drive? Do we know, Fred? Usually That's, those are two-wheel drive. Yeah, those are two-wheel drive vehicles. You think? Yeah. Okay. And uh, the Sanders. Uh, let's see. Nothing in here with Sanders. Wait a minute. I thought it said Sanders no. here. No. No Sanders. Sidewalk maintenance vehicles. That's not Sanders. No. No. Nope. No. And the two three-quarter ton trucks with plows. What I and sidewalk maintenance vehicles. I'd like to know which vehicles are going to be replaced. From this, uh -huh. it's in your long-range capital expenditures report. I want to know what is going off this list if we buy these vehicles. Well, if you don't, you didn't buy them last year either. So, um, no, I can I'm, get you. I can get you the vehicle numbers because we've got the I, whole. I don't think that's particularly important from the standpoint of, for instance, a six-wheel truck. Is now well over its 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 drop dead date. Good. Then it should be cleaned out, sold and for scrap. And that's what they're trying to do. Trade well, it in. We want to trade it in, but we want to trade it in in the purchase of a new vehicle. Yes, and that's fine as long as it gets off here, so I don't have to look at it every well, year. That's what they with the ten next to it. Well, we haven't exactly cleaned out vehicles. That's what this warrant article says. That for every vehicle we purchase, we're getting rid of a vehicle. 
Where does it say that? So Replace vehicles to be traded in if deemed. If uh, deemed prudent. to be prudent right. by if the they, public works director. If they are junk, then they can't be traded in because the people who take them will not take them. We have to strip them, and then we have to, at our expense, take them to a junkyard to see if we can get well, junk costs for them. Well, they're already sitting in a junkyard. Well, so I don't agree with that. So are we asking if we have a consensus that we want to go forward with this or not? I'm losing so. contract. Con you know. yeah. I so. want to add add to this. I would. I am for this Warren article if we take it out of the unassigned fund balance. I'm not for this until we figure out what they're replacing so. and if the old crap is going to be gone. Since we're not doing, because we need the trucks. All right, we, we, we push off trucks year after year after That's year. That's right. The money's already there to spend. Let's take it out of the unassigned fund balance. We won't have a tax effect. Jim. Look at all that. You know. It's Look at this is coming from the public works there. director, which is fine. I, I would love to have him come in and explain. That's fine. Right. We can do that. Yeah, we can do that. I, I would like that before making a decision whether it comes from the un un unassigned fund balance or it goes in okay. to a warrant article. If we could have him come in, that would be, I think, yep. I agree. I think the consensus is that we, we need them, but we want to find out where the funding is going to come from. Okay. Okay. And what's going to happen to the old crappy vehicles? Right, right, right. We're not a salvage yard right, here, right. or we shouldn't be. The next one is the highway block grant. <clears throat> this is the paving. Mm -hmm. um, $590,170 for the next next streets that are on the list to be, to be paved, and $316,231 of that sum is coming from the state of New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I'm that. for that to go yep. forward. I have a comment. Go ahead. I remember our, the fun we had with Belmont and Fairfield and so forth. We used to list 10 or 15 streets or whatever every single year, and of course all of them never got done, and some, are, some streets were on there year after year. I want to know, I think for the public, I'm in favor of doing this, especially with the block grant, but only if there are specifics on there for the public for two, maybe two or three streets that will absolutely, positively get done if this funding Okay, is. we have the two votes only, here. Is there a third the only, vote? The, and the only thing I'm going to say about that is that, that whole list can change season to season, and that's what we found out last year. So uh, I have no problem going up forward with this. Part of it, we have no problem. And then we will. If, uh, if they, if Public Works doesn't have an idea now for 2019, what they need for roads. They, and then they had the same problem last year when, when, uh, is it Forest or the other one? We lost two streets. We, we lost in the two streets in the middle of the winter because okay. of certain water and everything else. So. And it also doesn't make sense to pave a road if we're going to have to dig it up in two years or whatever Correct. our plan is to mm -hmm. replace yeah. the source. So we sure. have a consensus right. on, yeah. on that one. All right, so the next one is the Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund. It's to put 300000 to be added to the Road Improvement Fund. I think that's, that's I, yeah, necessary. I'm consensus there. I think All right, there should I be think consensus. that's consensus. Yeah, I'm against it. I think we should allocate more money to the Public Works budget. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Okay. And I, but I, I, I think, I, and, and don't <laughs> give me, I, I don't disagree with you. However, uh, because of our always having default budgets, mm -hmm. this gives the public the actual choices of what they want to make, whether they want to do it or not. I know, but the public gets frustrated when they have like 500 things to vote on. So I think if we simply explain it to the public. And then they get frustrated when they have a default budget, <laughs> like we, we are right now. I think we have a consensus there. <laughs> so, uh, not I that I disagree with I you, Regina, I just think that that's that's what it is. So the next one I, is replacing. Wait, 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 wait. I think this should come under the Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund. I, I think that's how this should be funded. That's what we just said. So we'll put money there. The next one is the uh, replace culverts at Tuck Field and Park Avenue. Fred, do you have any? Wait a minute. These culverts are in failure. In order to correct the drainage down in that area, these culverts have to be replaced. So what is the problem that's, um, that... 
they're old, they've fallen apart, they're, they're soft metal, yeah. and they've just reached their life. That's the one that I think should so. come under the Road Improvement Capital Reserve. Well, you know, we, for years we had sewer and drains. We yeah. had uh, yeah. upgrades. We never get in, it in done. our budget. We never get it done because we it was never funded. Yeah, mm -hmm. but this should be so, easy to fund through the capital reserve. And but that's the problem. We we've never funded it to get it done, and we've always when the when it comes to the public works budget, we've taken money out of that. And well, where did it come you, from? Can't you stipulate from, in the article to be taken from the capital reserve fund? If there's money put in the if fund, there's money money put in the well, fund. you're just talking about putting three hundred thousand in there. So if the money is there, yes. then you could do that. But if they, the fund gets voted down, you can't do it. Well, then well, can you put if if there is sufficient funding, if there is sufficient money in the capital reserve fund? I'm not gonna. I'm not voting to move you this could, out of the board. I'm not year. moving it for it either. Okay, that's fine. Okay. The next one is the can, Elaine. Can I move that forward? No. Okay. You want to move that one forward? No. The uh, Elaine sewer and drainage replacement. See, this is like what I'm trying to get to. We have these projects. They're always going to be there every single year, whether it's a lean street or whatever yeah. street. So why can't we just throw two, three hundred grand toward the public works budget, which, if you looked at it, has not increased at all, except for contractual obligations or wage-related obligations. I mean, what they're asking for is next to nothing, and they have to deal with everything. They have to deal with the playground not being able to get put up because of this drainage issue we have throughout the whole town, apparently. And, you know, just like adding things as a warrant article, I understand the method for reasoning in doing that is because if we have a default budget, then we won't get anything. Mm. But maybe we need to focus on having an operating budget that is actually what we need. And maybe if we explain that to enough people, they can get the word out and saying the so, board of selectmen and the town manager are not out there to attack the taxpayers. They're trying to make their mm -hmm. life as easy and as run as seamlessly as possible. You know, I mean, it's just we got to put more money. We, more money has got to go toward public works. And, and, and I don't disagree with you, Regina. But what might be a better way to do this is you have a road improvement capital reserve fund. But we also have a sewer and drains definitely great. capital reserve yeah. fund and then you could take this article yeah the, and uh, all, the, whatever the happens. all the sewer and drainage articles could come out of that but yeah. you'd have to have a a, uh, a starting fund of that of probably five hundred thousand dollars to start with a mm -hmm. capital improvement fund mm -hmm. and if you did that 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 might take away some of these things but so long as people you continue to do that every year yeah and uh, you got any suggestions on that, Mr. Town Manager? Well, the reason it's not in the budget is simply because you have, how many members of the Budget Committee now, six? No, well, six Seven. and three. Six and three, so nine. nine so you need five votes to keep it in the budget. Mm -hmm. If you have five votes against, it comes out of the budget, you, there's nothing to be done. Right. So the reason Warren articles are done simply is to allow the people to make a choice as right. to what they want to have done. Right. Not what, not what a board or committee wants to have done. These mm -hmm. are just proposals in public works. So if you, have, if you have to go through a capital reserve fund, now you have to create the fund, and now you have to have another warrant article to expend the fund if it's approved. If it's not approved, nothing happens, right. absolutely zero. It gets, it gets kind of confusing, but that's just <laughs> kind of the way the, the law works. So. Uh, the reason you have warrant articles like this is simply to m let people make a decision. This sewer system needs yeah. to be replaced project along with the drainage. Project by yeah. so. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Okay. And the second uh, line, Fred, uh, six inch, you want to put clay. There's a typo there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fix that. And is, would this require easements? Because in this neighborhood, I'm not sure um, whether the lines can be run without maybe having a little problem. Um, Public Works knows better than I do. They but haven't asked for easements, so I'm assuming there is no need for easements. They're going to do that down the center of the street. Okay. Okay. I just a thought that occurred to Which me. would be the logical thing for them and to do. And they are going to be doing that street over? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because so. once we do this, you, you do the sewer this year, or 2019, 2020, you 
you put the permanent paving on the street after everything's settled. Yeah. So you don't get a big dip in the road. Yeah. Is this sewer failing? Yes, it's it's clay pipe. It's All gone. All the clay sewers. Yeah. Are... yeah. This is one of the ones that needs to be replaced. Yep. They're trying to do this on a priority basis. Yep. So this is a priority. Well, this well, would be the street that they would pick next to have done. Okay. Well, then I'm well, in favor of it. Leave it. We'll leave it in there for now. Yeah. The next one is to replace the Eaton Park culvert. This is part of the Eaton Park culvert system. This one's in failure as well. Uh, it needs to be replaced as well. Is this no. is this why they can't put the playground mm -hmm. stuff? No, in? this is this is a little brook that runs down through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but would that the, be part of the drainage from the playground? No. It, it is. It does drain that general area of yeah, the park. Okay. Yes. It's wet. It's a wet. And when they went to put in the the new playground equipment, it was it was saturated. Saturated. Yeah. Well, I think there's two problems there, and that is that for years they've been they've been putting in material for the kids to land on that's soft. Yeah. <laughs> and of course that material sinks into the ground, so yeah. you, now you've got this bowl. Yeah. Of, of soft material that, that holds water, so that needs to be dug out. What this culvert does is go from the playground by by Park Ave, crosses over to the playground over by the ball fields. Right. There's that little ditch that runs through there. That's what this culvert does. That's that ditch there. Okay. So, but again, this this is a metal culvert. It needs to be replaced with a with a plastic culvert so that it will last for the next hundred years instead of having to be replaced 25 years from now. But is it still functioning now? It's functioning, but poorly. It's it's in dis, It's going to collapse eventually. So who put this forward? Public Works. So seventy-one thousand five hundred, we can replace will that this. Help them be able to put the playground in. It'll be part of the solution. The air material <coughs> that was put there and is allowed to settle into the ground at the playground has to be dug out mm -hmm. and good fill put in and compacted. And that will do this. Well, this will help drain that area. Yeah. As long as it's going to be redone anyway, I don't have a problem with and this. Just, one. Yeah, and just, I don't have a problem with it either. I don't. Okay, I'll go with it too. I and don't really I, like the. Well, oh, I, I and, and just looking back, going back and looking at the one that we had replaced culvert systems at Tuck Field and Park Ave. Mm -hmm. Does that include the one that goes under Park Ave by the high school? Yes, sir, it does. Now, I know that one, when we camered it in a few years ago, it is all rotted out. It's also collapsed partially. And it's partially collapsed. And we have buses that go over that all the time. Yeah. And that's that's a concern for me. So we have 175000 That's that one right there. That's that one. And I also believe the other one that's up on the other side isn't that the one that, because it, it says culverts. Yeah. They, it, in order to replace that culvert, there's, that culvert system, there's one large culvert there now. It requires two. And the reason it requires two is that it has to go across the top of the sewer line. And if you don't have two smaller culverts, you're going to have to raise the road grade. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that, and I know they came with that because I can remember back Oh, two or three years ago when they came in and they were concerned about losing that culvert and again that gets back to the number of years that we've taken stuff out of the so getting back to a, a uh, uh, having a fund capital reserve fund for sewer and drains might help correct that but I just yeah, wanted to let you know on that yeah, one. we've mm -hmm. already gone by it but that's so we all set on that we, we yeah. set on that for now but we yeah. might want to come back and look at it yeah. yep. uh, a, instead of doing a number of these, look yep. at a selectman's article to put in a capital reserve fund for be. for uh, sewers and drains. Yeah. So the next one is uh, purchase a, an ejection trash trailer. I have questions. We need an additional trailer because we, uh, when we have three-day weekends or we have large groups in the uh, the summertime, we we have too much trash. We can't move it all. We have to store some of it, and we need another trailer, or we're not going to be able to do that effectively. Now, on am I? Go ahead. Okay, um, Fred. The third line down, right after transfer station, you want this. That's another typo. Yeah. And um, now we have six trailers already. This would be a seventh. 
Yep. Uh, well, it, it calls it a trash ejection trailer. Is that any different from the six that we already have? No, this is a large over-highway ejection trailer. Yeah. Um, there are two types of trailers you can buy. One has a, what they call a walking floor, and, and the floor moves like this to move stuff off the end. But right. it takes probably 15 minutes, 20 right. minutes to offload. An ejection trailer is done in two, two minutes flat. Okay, so it's not exactly the same as the current ones. It's a little it's better because it'll... It, no, we have ejection trailers. That's all we've got. Same as we have. Oh, all right. the same as so the ones we So it's the same as the other one. Right. We just need a seventh one right. because Correct. of all the pileup. Okay, um, let's see. And the Too fire system in included, I don't I think they have that in the other trailers, but I know sometimes the yard horse has to yank one of those trailers out so the transfer station doesn't burn down? Well, we told them uh, after the last transfer trailer fire that we had that each transfer trailer that we purchase in the future is going to have a two and, inch, two and a half inch fire hose coupling in the ceiling so that we can just simply attach a fire hose to it, turn it on, and put the fire out. So this will and have that? Rather than ejecting the entire load out into the yard and letting it burn and put it out by piece. And right. I believe that the, the new tractor, we the new... Yard horse, we yard horse has the hydraulics on it, so we can dump that trailer if we have to. I think. That's correct. So, yep. which was the problem before, we right. didn't have a vehicle that we could dump it. Right now, right. we have a vehicle that will dump it. But are we going to have that fire hose coupling? Yeah, yeah, that's a requirement. Right. Okay. Excellent. I'm f I'm in favor. I'll go for it. All right. We don't want to have any fires if we can avoid Replace it. Replace no, the water don't. line at DPW facility. That's uh -huh. broken somewhere out in the yard. Could be in several different places. Now we only use the water at the public works building, uh, with the garages and the offices, uh, by turning it on sporadically during the day. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it just runs constantly. So the, the the unit needs to be replaced. The unit that's in there now, we can't even put a fire hydrant on it. Yeah. The pipe is too small. It's only a two-inch pipe. Oh my God. So we need to put in a proper fire protection system uh, and we need to put in the proper piping in order to hold a hydrant and a uh, regular hydrant for the fire department and then we'll extend that eventually around the around the property so that the rest of the, the property can be controlled for fires I, I have sure. another question okay do we have a map is public works working from a map on this as to where these lines would go would there be easements possibly for adjacent properties? This is all on town property. It doesn't, well, but you don't want everything all all crammed in. Is there a way to to um, move it along? Move it along, uh, say Pennyman and Elaine, or we, you want to stay away from the actual physical plant? There are already are water lines running down into Hardard's Way, that general area because we already have water lines in there. Uh, the purpose of this is to simply put in a new water line that will be today's modern standards to be able to put hydrants in and extend that line as needed. Okay, so now. We wouldn't come down Penniman or any of those other streets simply okay. because you're right, we would need easements, we'd need to go up and cut. Yeah. And, and you don't want to be compromising existing, because <coughs> there's an awful lot of pipes down there. No, that's um, true. It doesn't stipulate. Are they, are they talking six inch or eight inch hydrants? Uh, hydrants are five and five and five and a half inch. They're called five and a half inch hydrants. That's a standard hydrant for fire protection purposes. I can't tell you off the top of my head what size this line is, but it's it's probably going to be an eight inch line. Yeah, I think that we sh it would help if we knew that. Fred, go down four lines. You've got Will, you've got another typo there on the right-hand side, right after fire protection. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I think it would help, though, to see a diagram of the compound and where Public Works is thinking or planning on relocating this stuff. I'd like to see exactly where it's going to go. I don't think it would be a problem for them to get oh. that ready to, to put on the big screen um, when well, we're doing the last term for a plot plan. I'm not an engineer. That's what they do. That's what their job yeah. is. Right, and but I don't I think, think anybody on this table would is help, an engineer. Uh, Rusty, I think it would help to have it because they have on the screen sometimes. Well, why don't you wait and ask to discuss it with the DPW director? Yeah. Yeah. So I know it needs to be done, 
but I'd All just right. like to see something. So, so the public the census is can that. We're going to do that one. one. Yeah. yeah. All right. The next one is the uh, sidewalk capital reserve fund. Ah. So this will be. Uh, we already have the fund. No, we don't. Yeah. So this will be. Started right? establishing a. Yeah. A fund. A fund and yep. starting it with a hundred thousand dollars. Right. So I'm I'm opposed to this. Um, <laughs> in God in the early nineties, uh, the young lady was uh, killed running uh, in the evening at the end of High Street, and there was a big uh, uproar and a request for a sidewalk from Five Corners to Ocean Boulevard, and the sidewalk was funded, and it was constructed, ADA compliant, and people still run in the street because they don't like to go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. So I'm a little, uh, um, I'm not necessarily enamored of the ADA uh, compliance. Well, that's second, the second, um, I don't want to start another fund. And what about the Safe Routes to School project, which isn't off the ground yet? And that was for a sidewalk from the high school all the way down to uh, whatever, the school on Winnicott Road, Center School. And I don't see any signs of that being constructed. You'll have to ask the state to fund it. Because uh, ha, 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 that's ha. where the money comes from. Yeah, but you know that's been in that's been planned, and the school's been asking for it. So we it. have a consensus on the I th sidewalk I capital would. reserve fund. I'll be in favor of it if it comes from the unassigned fund balance. No, yeah. that's that's fine. All right, so we have consensus. We have it. Why, that, why why isn't it just a regular? I'd rather see a uh, uh, a if we're going to have a fund. Improvement fund, do it for sidewalks in general. Right. Oh, that's what this that's would what be. This is, yeah, this is a general fund, fund just for you sidewalks. You have to do ADA by, <laughs> by law. If you do it new, you have to no, do it by the that. ADA. And well, I think you should make it clear in the Warren article that mm. it's for sidewalks. Mm. For, that should yeah. be done to begin with. Yeah. yeah. I have and another point, gentlemen, and, and Regina. The concrete sidewalks we put in, I like a heck of a lot better than the hot top sidewalks, but the concrete sidewalks I don't think have ever, ever been uh, annually they're supposed to be uh, painted with some kind of a substance to keep them in place. What, what are you talking or envisioning here? Are you trying to do the hot top sidewalks like by Marston on High Street or cement? Sidewalk, sidewalks. I think there's a fairly good difference there, and even just looking at them, even just from a point of view of their surroundings. I think you'll have to ask Public Works. If, yeah. I, if I were to answer the question, I would suggest to you that we're doing asphalt sidewalks. Yeah, because it's cheaper. It's not only cheaper, but they're easier to, to maintain. maintain. Correct. Well, since we haven't tried to maintain any of the concrete sidewalks, I'm not surprised. I got to say, I think the reason why this is getting started, I haven't verified this exact question with the town manager, but I'll ask him right now, is because but we zeroed out the line item for sidewalks, right? Did we zero that out on the budget? It's gone. It's there, gone. There's no money. Because what was there was like not even enough, enough to, to get anything it. done. Right, right. So by starting this and putting the 100000 in this year, and making it clear that it's for mm. whatever sidewalks we need to be clear that it's going to be asphalt. Yeah, I yeah. Think, I think well, it's the, going to be. The only problem with that is ugly. There, there are certain places. You know, I, I don't care if they're ugly; they're easy to maintain. However, you get into areas like downtown; mm -hmm. they really have to be cement right. because of that area. So I, I don't if you I don't think you handcuff yourself mm. to just asphalt. I think but I think a majority of the down. town can have asphalt sidewalks. Yeah. Yeah, well, I would say that these should be in the rest of the town. But if they want to do uh, concrete ones up town, then we should have a special warrant article just for that hmm. sometime in the future. In the I future. think that we should let people know that we're going to try to do something with the sidewalks <laughs> and go and where we can get the most bang for the buck so we can accomplish more. 
And in the future, uh, not that I disagree with you, Rick. Yeah. No, and in the future, if the downtown mm -hmm. needs something, then have a special warrant article for that. Hmm. Yep. Okay. That's how I would see it. It's included, for instance, in the warrant article to do the drainage on uh, yeah. Lafayette so Road. Yeah, usually goes with something And that's going to be like concrete. That. Right. Yeah. And that's when you want to really yeah. go with Right. Those. Yeah, and I, I don't disagree with you, but I just, yeah. I was thinking of a reason why we might not want to just exclusively right. say. Right. Don't say anything. Yeah. That's good. Hot top. But, yeah. you know, even at the, the way the state does it, they, they, have do, they do all asphalt. Um, Except when you're rate. Well, they don't maintain them. That's what. It is. Uh, they. Uh, I will tell you though, they don't maintain them. That's but true. they lasted for at least 50 years before they gave out. Yep. Oh, I. And yep. uh, the one that in front of my house still looks good, but it's where the uh, drains uh, allow water to sit to yeah. deteriorate. Right. Yep. You're right. The actual sidewalks hold up yep. pretty well unless they're yeah. uh, sabotaged by lousy drainage. Yeah. Right. That's it. That's um, the bottom line. Good drainage so will save sidewalks. We'll leave that in there right now yeah. for, for a, a uh, capital reserve fund yeah. for that. Okay. Next Humans. one we have is a capital reserve fund for the... Human service agencies. No, we have no. a capital reserve fund for turnout gear. No, human service agencies is next. I've got my packet. Well, I then your packet is wrong. I yeah. Well, I didn't, I, I didn't put it together. So it says, the next one we have annual town meeting is articles. turnout gear. Turnout Humans. gear. Okay. So we have a, uh, a capital reserve fund uh, to purchase the turnout gear, and we'll start the, the sum of $200,000 to establish the fund. will come from the unassigned fund balance. So I'm That's a good yes. idea. Yep. I mean, that's, that's absolute necessity. And absolutely. That's oh, yeah. A necessity. And, it'll be yes. something and the next ongoing. one's a given. That's right. So we're all in favor. So the next one is the human service agencies. And these are all that's, people that have gotten yeah, that's money. That's no problem for me. That's, that's all right. Fine. And, and they give us a report on. Yes, each one of them files their okay. annual report as it comes mm -hmm. due. Okay. And the next one's a given, too. And the reevaluation. I have a question on that. I have people, a couple of people called me and said that they, you know, we just put out the second uh, tax bills mm -hmm. in, of the year. And they're saying that their valuation has changed from the June tax to this December one. And I'm not aware. It, I think the last reval was 2014 or 2015. This should be like five years in between. Some of them can be done in well, the office, can't they? We just had a reval two years ago. Yeah, yeah. It depends on what your ratio and, is. And the reason we did that was because the ratio dropped below 90%. The, the law says that once it drops below 90%, we have to reval the town again. So this isn't We're already a into formal the 80s. Eva uh, this is a formal this revaluation. Is That's right. Reval? This is a statistical revaluation <clears throat> by looking at the, the sales of property. The same we do for regular revaluation. Yeah. So you and, said that right, but the problem that, is that the properties are selling for so much money in town now that <clears throat> our equalization ratio is dropping so quickly. If we were to go, we, we have to do all property in 2021. That's the five-year threshold. We have to do it every five years by constitutional requirement. If we did that, our, our equalization ratio, we're thinking at the current rate of decline, would be somewhere in the, the low 70s or, or high 60s. Okay. And there'd be a huge balloon yeah. in the taxes. So we made the adjustment between official town-wide valuations to keep up with that equalization ratio. Well, this would be an official town-wide revaluation. We just were look the 150000 is the same price we put in two years ago. Yeah. We, we've asked uh, several firms for quotes. But we haven't got the new reval done yet, is what I'm saying. So yes, we just did one two years ago. Two years ago, we did one. But, we're gonna have to do but one. that doesn't account for a change between your June bill and your did December they get a, bill. Did they get a building permit? During the year or during the previous year? That's what I was going to say. Oh, they they yeah. they, they yeah, said they had nothing had changed, but I don't know. Well, you have, okay. don't know if they're telling you the real so story. So this is okay. for this warrant article. So I think, yeah, we'll we'll we're still looking for figures on that. That's the, that that figure is from last revaluation. Okay. So we still need a cost from MRI. We need a cost oh, oh. from three three different agencies, three and we've asked for them. We need bids yeah. from MRI. Well, quotations, well, not just MRI from. Well, okay, bids from at least three. So yep. the next one is the Recreation Infrastructure Special Revenue Fund. 
And this goes to uh, perform a needs assessment for future parks planning to replace or fix fencing at the inline rink, to renovate the Uptown Eaton Park building, to purchase surface materials for playgrounds, to purchase a snowblower for the recreation truck, to install a share structure for five no corners, playground, to replace mm -hmm. two dugouts at Tuck Field, to replace, uh, replace cave building, Tuck building doors with new lock system, as determined by the Board of Selectmen, the Town Manager, and the Director of Parks, yeah. and authorize this funds to come out of the infrastructure fund. That's what I, that fund's for, right? That's right, what yes. that fund's for. I agree that's with correct. this, but on the floor of the deliberative session, I will I will move to remove the installing whatever that structure is for five corners. Other than that, I don't have a problem with it. That's, that's, something what, that's the bus stop for the kids. That's there. the bus stop. Oh, the little house, well, why does it say the bus stop? Because they're using it for multi-purposes, that's why. God love us. So. That goes forward, huh? Okay. The next yeah. one is the town meeting Warren Arc IT. Yep. The IT for, for the town for upgrading uh, services at police, fire, public works, town departments, and to replace upgrade computers and other equipment. Definitely for this one. And, it, and it'll be a non-lapsing appropriation. So. And it will come um, from the unassigned fund balance. To outsource, what, does that mean going with the cloud or some, I don't understand, what are you going to outsource to? Right. And outsource the town's website hosting yeah. services. But outsource it to whom? To a outsourcer. To a web to an outsourcer? To a website. To an outsourcer, I guess it'd be the, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No the sourcers, website. but an outsourcer. <laughs> to a website service company. Or a, yeah, right. Well, yeah. I'm not. Hosting company. And Fred, uh, second sentence from the bottom on the right, you want to put, there's another typo. See where lapse is, the very bottom on the right-hand side, second line up. Oh, yes. Shall not yeah. lapse, just yeah. you want to correct the typo. So we're moving this one forward. Yeah, we're moving that one. The next one is the uh, Police Forfeiture Special Revenue Fund, which is. That's a normal. That's a no brainer. Fund. That's no problem. Electronic formatting paper documents. That's we should Good. continue. And we've already that. done this before. Yeah. Yep. And yep. so that's another one. Cemetery tree removal. Why isn't this going to come out of the cemetery budget? It, it, it comes is out of their trust fund. Comes out of the trust fund. That's why it's a special special warrant article. Well. Comes out of their maintenance fund. All three of the cemetery ones. Either. Yes. Yes. Right. Yep. That comes out of their fund that they authorized have. Authorized funding through the cemetery burial. Trust. Right. Mm -hmm. And they okay. have a, so they have that one. Okay. They have the purchase a tractor loader for the cemetery. Right. And they have a uh, complete the cemetery building so they can put the heat and stuff in there as they right. need. And that will all come out of the, cer the cemetery. Trust fund. Uh, <clears throat> trust, trust fund, fund correct. Yeah. Complete cemetery. Hazardous waste building. collections. Yes. This should give us this, two. This will do, give us two. It's similar to what we've done in the past couple of years. We do right. it with Newcastle yep. to share the cost. It's better than having people throw trash in the woods. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. For it. So the Conservation Land Acquisition Fund, <coughs> they're asking us to yep. raise and appropriate 20000 to be placed in the fund. They, I was told today they may come in and ask for additional funds because they're looking to purchase a piece of property. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They can do that at the deliberative session. Right. I would think. Well, they may give you something before then. Oh. That would be nice. Okay. So okay. then we have the uh, the office, the town no. hall office doors. Yeah. The inside I've doors had, we've replaced the yeah. outside ones. The no second time. figure should change too. I've had a lot of complaints on that uh, because people love the outside doors and they come in, that and then they sense. try to from their wheelchair, try to yank on the inner doors. So it's kind of so too bad yeah, we didn't do both do last year. Yes, so the second sum will be the 16440? Yeah. 16440. So the, and, and I'm in favor. Number, line number four? Yep. That'll be a I just circle that. Big okay. help for people. The Naval Committee, this will be the town of Hampton Rose, raise and appropriate the sum of $10,000 for persons supporting the town of Hampton, USS Hampton, and Naval Committee. I don't. I, I don't know if we want to. Do we want to call it the USS Hampton or do we want to? We call it anything you want. The new one is what? The USS, USS Virginia. Virginia. But it could be into, you know, and, and we're going to start a fund, but then. Well, we already know. have a fund, don't we? Or? No. No, no. No, we don't. Oh, okay. Can we call it Tommy Hampton? We had Hampton? one. 
We town had one, but it was forfeited. Put Town of Hampton Visiting Submarines Fund or something like Naval that. Naval Committee Fund. Naval Committee Fund. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. All right. yep. So, all right. So that's. We can do that. Okay. Fund 21 balance to unassigned fund. What is Fund 21? We, um, yeah, I have, to, I have to think about this now. We got so many bloody warrant articles. Yeah, fund 21 was the fund that was taken from. Um, before the money went to the recreation department, it went for, for improvements to street lighting at the beach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And we had money left in there last year uh, of $41,616.19. And I asked, you asked the town, I ah, asked, suggested yes. the warrant article, the town turned it down. Mm -hmm. They will not spend the money for that purpose. So we might as well just put it in the general fund. Excellent. And use it to decrease taxes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Excellent. So the next one is police paid detail cost. So yep. the town of Hampton vote to amend the chapter place strike from the end of the paragraph. It starts plus 30% and substitute plus 50. Right. Didn't we already do this? As a no, we didn't. This, this, this actually has to be amended in the, in the uh, ordinance. Uh, and it requires a town vote to do that. Um, and that's just more money for us, right? And well, that's, that's money that comes in from private vendors into the yeah. town. Right. Yeah, I mean, because, so the, the, it's to help pay more of the but it costs. Yeah. More of the costs, exactly. Right, vehicles okay. out of this yeah. Yeah. Um, Fred, at the, on the line that starts with note, do you mean the percentage require payments? Or that it looks awkward there. I'm not yeah. quite sure how you want the to. The note doesn't it. go in. That's just for you, for, for your information for you folks. But um, percentage right now there anybody that hires a, a pay a patrolman or a firefighter is required to pay 30 percent towards the cost of right. retirement and everything else right those costs have gone up yeah and we're not recovering as much as we should yeah so we have to increase it to 50 percent to make sure yeah. the town doesn't pay anything out of taxes that's but, the whole purpose of this but that wording is a little awkward she, so again want, that's just for us it's that's not just a no for you from us. that note won't show, no, won't show oh okay all right, I'm good with that. All right. The next one is repeal of false alarm fees, and we're doing that because the law doesn't allow yes. us to do that anymore. And that's, that's right. We just yeah. have to do it. Yeah. The police department will take care of that if there's, a, if there's a problem. And the next one is to increase the veterans optional tax credit right. from yes. 500 to 750. Yeah. That was a new bill that passed this year. Definitely. Yeah. And the same one is a change in the Veterans Service Connected Disability. That's a no, change in the law. That's a change. Right? That's that's about a 20-year-old well, well, change. Well, okay, wait a minute. I have a question on this one. Does this apply to new veterans or existing veterans? Applies to any veterans. Oh. veterans. We have, we have a, a couple of people who are currently under this. There are some people, well, there are a number of people yes. who are covered and, by And this. if a new person comes in, they would be under this law. So it's a new person. It won't. It no, won't. it'll affect everybody that's currently under the law. Oh, okay, yep. that was my question. No, no, it'll affect everybody uniformly. Okay. So, so the next one is an optional tax credit for combat service. Correct. This is brand new. This has never been around before. Uh, it allows the town to give up to a $500 exemption if we have a member of the New Hampshire National Guard or the Armed Forces Reserves who lives in town and is called to the active duty combat, they can have a $500 exemption on their property taxes while they're in combat. So this wouldn't apply to existing veterans? No, this is not for veterans. This is for active it's duty. It's just a current active, active duty. Active yeah. duty yeah. people. If, yeah. they, if, they get, if they get activated. I'm in favor of that. Yeah. OK. Uh, Next one is Annual town meeting warrant article, no smoking ordinance. Excellent, Fred. No smoking ordinance. Excellent yeah. job. Have you guys been following those new uh, two uh, locations in Massachusetts where they're now authorized to sell marijuana and yep. all that stuff? My question on this one is, will our officers have the technology, and I don't know what it is, because they said it's very different from doing the, dr the liquor um, you know, alcohol. Uh, this is not for, for pot. This is for regular tobacco. This is right. for any smoke. Any, any, any. Yes, but if you have people who are um, 
what, I don't know, violating. We don't have the technical expertise to answer that no, question. Sure. Yeah, it's no, and we're not, we're not, by this ordinance, we're not trying to enforce yeah, federal and state drug laws. Drug. Okay, you it's just not, it's not a no smoking say period. where you can't do it. Whatever it is you're right. smoking, right. you can't do right. it. Okay. The next one is for a code enforcement officer. We still have to get the dollar figure for this, but this okay. would give you a code. I this think this we is something we all, everybody here thinks we should do. I have a question on that, too, because my inclination is to look for two part-time that way you don't have the benefits and in case one or the other is sidetracked or something happens or whatever I would be inclined to push for two code enforcement officers and and cut out the full-time salary benefits whatever I think it's probably a better way and a more a more appealing way to get this, and I think that it would help um, tremendously to have two. Uh, two I don't know if it's more appealing because uh, I want to see us try to get somebody that will do the job. Yes, and but can we get two and knock off the benefits? Well, that's the problem when you have such a good economy, especially like we have right now. All right. Go ahead. Rick has to go, so we're going to okay. yeah. wish him well. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck, Rick. Good luck, Again, Rick. you need anything? Give a holler. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. So um, I, I think at this time it is set up to, for, to be a right. full-time position. Yeah. And my, my thing is, especially with the economy the way it is right now, you can't find part-time people. You can't find full-time people, but to well, find... Well, you might be able to find individuals who have retired or who have stepped aside and would like something to keep them busy and they have some experience. I wouldn't be looking for really young people see, to take... Can we this. get the, the figures on what it costs for full-time with benefits? Yeah, that, that, that can come back to us. Cost, and then yeah. we can make a decision. Yeah, yeah we're working on that. That can come back to us. Right, okay. So that one will pull back. The next one is the fire uh, is the uh, raising appropriate the sum for the purpose of the fire uh, to hire four additional firefighters EMT and the fire department over the above the positions funded by the 19 budget to authorize the board of selectmen to apply for the contract and accept federal homeland security safer funding estimated at 221 thousand to be applied against said appropriation the cost the cost in the year two is estimated at 311 and the in federal funding estimated be 233598 and in yeah. year three it'll be 328 with a cost being 115,000 and then federal you... safer grants pay for salary and benefits yeah. and this shall be null and void if the federal funding is not approved or received yeah. and there's no help after those three years that's just three years Correct. for starter. Correct. I, I went over my listing for uh, turnout gear, and I did a little counting today. Well, well, they're not talking about turning out gear right now. We're talking no, about No, 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 but what I'm talking about is, this, is the well, this uh, is what, staffing in the department. The staffing we, hasn't We have changed. only 29 firefighters. And that hasn't changed in, in what I know, but years. 29, I think, is, is the number to focus on. You have your lieutenants, captains, EMS, and two chiefs. But what leaves you, what you are left with is only 29 bodies to staff that department. Exactly. Yeah. That's why we're saying we want to increase so, it. So I'd like to mention that we need to upgrade from 29. And I think the important thing is that it allows us to man an ambulance at the beach full time. Yes. That's what I was going to say. And that's, that's an important thing where now they can't do that. This will allow them to man the ambulance at the beach full time. And... I think doing it through the Firefighter Safer Grant. Yeah. I was com making some comparisons as to if we were to just pay without applying for this grant, which I think definitely needs to be done. Yeah. Because they pay, the first year they pay. Uh, Using the grant as a kickoff. Yeah. Way to get started. It's like 75% the first year. Yeah. And the second year, and then it drops down right. to 35%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But. What would the cost be for just one year? I had a discussion with the chief about it one time, and it would be a total expense of like I think over four hundred thousand just mm -hmm. for the, if the town didn't didn't mm -hmm. apply for this grant just yeah. to staff four people for one year. Yeah. So right. this well, is, is if you look because we have another article after this yes. that says uh, without grant that it'll be July yeah. nineteen, and so that's covering it for six months. Right. And that's at two ninety five. So you're talking almost five hundred thousand right. dollars if if we did not go for the safer grant. 
The other thing right. to think about, yeah. and you may recall a couple years back, was all the building going on on the west side of town. There has been talk of locating a secondary fire um, uh, accommodation. I haven't heard that talk in, 20, in 15 no, years. No, it's, let's, it's let's more recent. With the so let's, let's, it's know, more recent, Rusty. Let's but stick with the Warren article. And that, that was when they also were talking about abandoning this station and moving the second yeah. one over there. I'm so in favor of this Warren article. So but I'm in favor I, uh, of this Warren article, I think too. this is good. I'm Regina? Good. Okay. I'm very good with it. Mill Road Sewer Replacement. Molten. Molten Road, I'm sorry. Molten Road Sewer Replacement, 989. I think this is something that needs to be done. However, I would like to see them come back and, and do it in phases. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, this, is a, this is, you know, there's almost a million dollars to do that one road, and I'm hoping that they could come back and do that in three phases, and we do it over time. And then, that, But that would give us three years. It would give us the chance to do a lane in Richards, a lane in Richards Street, and then it would get us a chance to do this, and then because you're going to pave it at the same time, at that time you could address some of the issues of the the speed on there. With after we do a traffic study, which is what was the recommendation of the police, police chief, chief. and uh, even actually in the meantime we can do some some traffic things there at the recommendation of the police chief. So are you talking three separate articles over a three-year period? You would have to, you would yeah you would have to. So do you're going to start it, and then next year somebody says no, and you're stuck. Yep. Yeah. I don't like doing. Well, I don't like I that. don't like coming up with another million dollars in one year to do it for this. Well, it, we have we are so far behind with the roads. You're you're certainly right. Uh, that, that's been over years of neglect this, this from is, this town. Well, this is sewer, right? This is sewer. It's because, so, because of the old clay sewers. Sewer drains, roads, and sidewalks. So right. if we did a fund for that, these are like things that we could build up to work. You could, have, have you could take it out of the fund and then have the rest of it, come, uh, the, the road part then of it come out of it. offset it by an appropriation. Fred, right. Fred, can we look Whatever at the we, UFB um, and it, did, and take uh, an, uh, get an idea if we could fund, say, this project using the UFB and then keep building up the fund for the next couple of years that we've already agreed to take out what a million for to reduce the tax rate did we do that we didn't do it no because no okay we have all these bonds well that's even out. better then if we could possibly if it, we could at least explore the possibility of funding this so we were guaranteed that we'd get it done we've got to get these road projects done so we'd be uh, and then keep working at building up the ufb again to the um to a roughly where we have it now. You know, if we end up this year. I don't want to do it piecemeal. If we ended up this year in deficit, we're going to have to take money out of the unsigned fund. Comes out automatically, yeah. Yeah, which is, so it's important for us to maintain that level in there. Yeah. And not for this to year. It. Yeah. I think this should become next year's. Yeah, I in, think it should be. In, in two year. years, we're going to have a bulge in the tax rate. Yeah. That's why we held the money this year. Yeah, right. So we should we should hang on to that and not. You know. I, I think I think that's one that we can probably put. We, we're already. I think we do one major sewer drain project a year, but then with the fact that coming back with a capital improvement fund, looking at doing a capital improvement fund yeah. so that we can do that. Yeah. So well, one of my concerns was that we 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 had never finished the beach, and we got a lot of infiltration through the beach. Mm -hmm. And we need to finish those roads down there in order to stop that infiltration, or we just might as well just treat the harbor because that's what we're doing. Yeah, that's a very expensive proposition. We can cut our costs if we can get the infiltration done. So that yeah. needs to be considered. And, too. And again, that would be part of the uh, of a capital improvement fund yeah. if we could take yeah. so much out of that each year to do right. certain things like that. Yeah. High Street is High Street is disgusting from Five Corners all the way to Route One A. I agree. I mean, there's. There, all these so lock road is disgusting we have more road problems and we are just we're just well, spinning well, our it, it's been years and years of i know of, of they, boards of selectmen not yeah. not approving yeah doing any stuff they want to keep the taxes low keep the taxes low and and yeah and we all want to keep our taxes low but at, at the yeah. cost of what yeah so the last one and and no impact fees imposed by the planning board. So the last one we have here is 
Uh, the one that says the town of Hampton shall vote raise an appropriate 295 to hire four additional firefighters for the yes. exclusive positions provided in the budget. Okay. The four additional firefighters will be hired on or after July 19. Additional firefighters will provide the 10 sh members per shift to allow full-time ambulance coverage capabilities at both yeah. stations. So that would give us a total of 37 if we do the well, four and four. Well, if the grant passes. Yeah. I, uh, I don't is this in lieu of the grant, or is this an extra this four? Is, it's, I think it's one or the other. If we don't get the grant and this one passes, you'll still get okay. four. Because I looked at it as four and then f four more. To no, bring see, I, up. I looked at it no. as getting four, and you're either going to get them through the grant, and if the okay. grant doesn't pass, then we're Can asking. Can that be written in here? That could be written. That in here, it would make be. it a contingent article. Yeah, because yes. otherwise, yes. Might, right. somebody will say, "No, you're getting eight. Right. Well, that's what I thought. Right. So can we can we look at changing that? Wording? Yeah, I just thought we wouldn't. You either do either or. Just yeah, to I throw think we one should of them just out. do the federal grant one. Well, but well, yeah, no, right. put the no, put the put on the wording people. on the federal grant thing. If this does not pass, article such and such, whatever the heck you're numbering it, uh, will. Uh, fill the bill or something like that. So what you're saying is if the federal... Put the firefighter article, put the four article first mm -hmm. and then put the put the um, funding I don't article think we should have it. this one on here. I think we should just do the grant one. So if, if the grant fails, we don't get any memo. I don't want to do that. Why don't we put the four, adding the four, and then fail? if in case it fails, it. put the grant out mm -hmm. as the next article after it. That's what I would do. What does Jim think? We need it. I'll go with that. I think I think that's I think yeah. Yeah. So we'll put that one yeah. first. Yeah. And then if the then it, we can add to the safer grant that if the safer grant passes, article number of the we'll other one will be null and void. Will be null and void. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because we've we got to get more staffing. Okay. We so what we can do is have there are a number of these from Public Works. Yeah. Yep. And so can we have them come in sure can. at our next meeting? Yep. And we will discuss what's going on with the, them, and that will give us more. Were there any other grants that you, any other articles that you felt you needed no. more information I on? I do want to talk to Public Works about That's what I've those, just asked. Those vehicles. So, yep. they're, they're, so the, the ones that deal with Public Works, can we have them come in and yeah. give yeah. presentations on, I want to make sure on the, the ones that they had? Gone. Yep. Yeah. Can okay. do. Uh, yeah. So the next now, one. Now, do these get passed on to the budget committee now? Or? Not until after you approve them. Okay. If you if you kill them, they're not going anywhere. Right. Obviously. Yeah. And so, you have only three more meetings to do it. Um, so yes, um, and then we got plenty of time. Uh, so they're going to be here at the next well, meeting. And if we an need if we need to have another meeting, we will schedule that, which we've already said we would do. Okay. So, uh, the other thing we had was we had a. Um, petition warrant, petition article. warrant article for the 2019 Christmas parade. Yeah, and uh, without well, Christina exception, Christina gave that to you. And yep, that it has in. to go on the warrant yeah. anyhow. So we just put it in. So yeah. it'll that be the first non-submitted article. For right. No, okay. non selectman's article. Right. All right. Did Mark come for the aquarium stuff or? To uh, talk with the board after the meeting. And a non-meeting or? Non-meeting. Yes. So I make a motion to adjourn at uh, at 2107. 2107. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you very much, Channel 22. <laughs>